can pick up this guitar and I can understand what makes it special on a gut level. I don't want to pick it apart. That takes the soul out of the guitar. This guitar undoubtedly has soul. But when you talk about rare, when you talk about iconic, when you talk about a piece of music history, a good part of the 60s and 70s rock and roll sound wouldn't exist without this particular guitar. Okay, that's important. The 1959 Les Paul, you know, it's a legendary instrument. A lot of people have a, a certain sound in mind when they see a Les Paul, because it's, it is a rock and roll instrument. So you can think, you know, Leonard Skinner, Jimmy Page. But for me, when, when I pick up one of these guitars, I can play it on a quiet amp, and it just, for me, it ceases to, to have that uh, association because it's just a beautiful instrument. And you know, then when you do crank it up to a Marshall or whatever, it will go there and, and do that. This is the first burst that was ever in the store. The irony is that this guitar has was living in our backyard pretty much. 20 miles south of us, this guitar was sitting in a guy's house for 30 years. A good retail store will build community and create a space that people want to come in, whether they're buying or not. We decided to donate a portion of the proceeds of this sale to a wonderful institution called Passim. We're on the same kind of path as to what we do for the community. Passim has been around for over 60 years. It's tucked away right in the heart of Harvard Square and we have over 300 shows annually there. In its early days, Bob Dylan and Joan Baez performed there and it grew to different iterations over the years, but it was always this almost home away from home for folk musicians. There's an intimacy in that, in that space that, that encourages people to, to commune uh, over music. When it first started out, um, it was a, a, little, a little club, and uh, it was a place where folks would come together and share music. It's just done a really wonderful job at providing support for artists, so we try to give opportunities for musicians who are just starting out through our open mic, through our campfire festival. The Iguana Music Fund is one of Passim's grant opportunities for artists, and since its inception in 2008, we've been able to give out almost $600,000 to uh, over 300 artists. No one's getting rich. <laughs> Ah, uh, keeping the doors open at Passim. That is a labor of love. It's an important part of the music community in Boston. So our part in this community is to do the same. It's to understand that a lot of working musicians can't necessarily walk in and buy all the stuff that we sell. <laughs> I think there's a really special and unique aspect that Passim and the Music Emporium both hold, and that is being pillars in the music community, both with artists and uh, music lovers. Not every music store has that. That's something that's really special um, and unique, and we're lucky that we have the Music Emporium here. Do we have to sell this guitar? It's not about things. And it's not about a simple transaction. There's a story that we're trying to tell about the guitars we acquire, especially a guitar like this. Our part of this guitar story is like come to, an, come to a close. Doesn't matter how great something is, eventually you become kind of accustomed to it. And you recognize that the guitar after all is supposed to be doing something other than sitting in my office. <laughs> uh, and we feel like we can do some good with it.